Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, where we are studying book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse through the entire Bible. We are studying a new book, Second Chronicles. We just finished First Chronicles. Now, as I said before, um, the, the the books First and Second Kings, and then First and Second Chronicles, originally was they were written each as one book. Um, scholars, translators, whoever came and separated the books. Um, some of the some of the books themselves, the titles were given. So first and second Samuel was given. First and second Samuel was the actual title. In other words, when you actually read in in that in the title. But um um. I, as you know, too, let me just, because I, I don't oftentimes talk about this. Um, this is a plain and simple study through the entire Bible. And we rely on the plain and simple reading of the Bible. In other words, if you have been studying with me since Genesis, then you know I don't refer to men. I don't quote men. I don't quote Com, um, commentaries, um, notes, men's notes, people's opinion. Um, if you read the Bible, the Bible itself will explain itself. And basically, so that's what we're doing is going through the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. And as I said, I I think it is plain and simple in the text. God was simple. In other words, his children can read the message that he gave, the revelation that he gave was simple enough for you to read it and understand it and obey it. That's the purpose of scripture. All right. So we're in second Chronicles and um, first Chronicles, it, it, spends time on the life of David. Really, though, as he is setting up worship. So kings, we got to look, we can even say with David's and uh, second Samuel. Uh, but in, in kings, we saw the, the, the kingdoms, <coughs> the kings of Israel, primarily from the northern tribes. And also with more of the, an, a political emphasis. Here we see from, as we started with David in the first Chronicles, and then as we go into the first, as you remember the first Chronicle, the first what, nine chapters was nothing but genealogies. And then of course it went into the life of David. But it, it basically focused on a lot of spiritual side of things. Uh, the, the, the setting his heart to want to build the temple, preparing for the temple. Now we're going to move into Solomon, King Solomon, uh, in his reign, and um, and it spent a lot of time on Solomon because really we're going to see a lot of chapters devoted to Solomon building the temple, the dedication of the temple. One of the interesting things about God in terms of when we talk about a nation from God's perspective, the very first, the most important thing, one of the first important things is temple slash worship and then worship of the true God. And um, and I think, too, even if we think about today, if you say I want to build a community, one of the first things ought to be a part of that community is a true church of God. Okay, a true church of God. Um, and, and and let me just say this, where you have seen that, even though we're not have been churches have not been perfect, <clears throat> but where you have seen that, you, you will see more um, stability in that community. And where you see less churches, you see less stability, crime rates are higher, immorality is higher. That's just a fact. Okay. So, um, 
as we prepare, uh, I mean, we're going to spend a lot of time on what the temple is about. And then, um, 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 let me see here before I come out of this, spend a little time. What the temple is about, um, how the temple, what God expects for the out of the temple, I should say. Um, and it's going to be interesting, again, whenever you see the amount of time that someone spends on something, on anything, um, the, the amount of time <coughs> becomes very important. And the fact that we have the first pretty much nine chapters of um, Solomon's life, and, 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 and the bulk of that is him building, preparing to build the temple, building the temple, and then um, 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 the dedication of the temple, which was grand. God shows up, right? God shows up to, to build the temple. Um, so, um, with that, let's get into it. Where are we at here? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, ho, ho. Home of Christ. All right. First Chronicles here. Second Chronicles chapter one. All right. All right. Now, Solomon, I mean, as we're going to see here, the different perspectives from the different books. Um, we did not see a lot of the hardships of David. We didn't even really see a lot of the sins of David. We saw some sins from from a different perspective, but we didn't see like his, his adultery, uh, his ordering the murder of Uriah. You don't see Absalom's uh, revolt. Um, a lot of things we didn't see with David. So he's now passed on. For example, another thing we, we didn't see is, um, remember, Adjaniah, his brother, Solomon's brother, who, when it came near to for David to die, he just immediately, he, he tried to usurp authority. We're not going to see how David deals with um, kind of straightening up the um, the past generation sins so they don't follow Solomon in there. And like one of the things is that he tells his brother Adonai that even though he tried to usurp authority, he said, look, if you behave yourself, everything will be, will be all right. But he doesn't, and Solomon had them executed. And you see in Kings where Solomon executed Joab and all of the enemies uh, of David. All right. So verse 1, he says, um, Solomon, son of David, strengthened his hold on his kingdom. The Lord, his God, was with him and highly exalted him. Then Solomon spoke to all of Israel, the commanders of thousands and the hundreds, and, and to the judges, and every leader in all of Israel, and the heads of the family, families. Solomon and his whole assembly with him went to the high place that was in uh, Gibeon because God's tent of the meeting, which the Lord's servant Moses had made in the wilderness, was there. Now, this is the tabernacle here. And you remember Solomon had built the tabernacle. Again, the first thing that God did when, it, when he brought Israel out of bondage, out of slavery, after the crossing of the Red Sea, the first thing we see, about three months afterwards, they construct a portable temple. This was a place of worship made of curtains and stuff. Um, so now we see, and we're going to see this something like 480 years by the way, this, from, from this point here, from 480 years, where now Solomon is going to build an actual temple. Verse 3, 4. Now David had brought the ark of God from kirith Jerem to the place he had set up for it because he had pitched the tent for it in Jerusalem. 
but he put but he put the bronze altar which uh Bethalia, son of Uri, son of Ur, her, had made in front of the Lord's tabernacle. Solomon and the assemblies inquired of him there. Solomon offered sacrifices there in the Lord's presence on the bronze altar in the tents meeting. He offered a thousand burnt offerings uh, on it. So you see a lot of burnt offerings, thousand. Now, verse 7, that, that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what, you, what I should give you. And Solomon uh, said to God, you have, shown great mercy, great, you have shown great and faithful love to my father David. Now, let me stop before I answer that. Read on. Let me go back to verse 7 here. It said, That night God appeared to Solomon and asked him, What should I give you? Now, God is asking this. How would you answer this question here? I think a lot of us know this story. We, we know how it's going to go, but this is astounding because of the answer that Solomon gives. Verse 8, And Solomon said to him, You have shown great and faithful love to my father David, and you have made me king in his place. Lord God, let your promise to my father David now come true, for you have made me king over of people as numbers as the dust of the earth. Now grant me wisdom and knowledge so that I can lead these people for who can judge this great people of yours. Now this was such, and again, what a great answer because why, why was this answer great? And if you stop and you think about this, Solomon already had riches, fame, he already had, you know, things, okay? I mean, he, he grew up in that opulence and wealth. Um, watch God's answer, though, because God adds a couple other things for, to this. God said to Solomon, since this was in your heart and you have not requested riches, wealth, or glory, or for the life of those who hate you, and you have not even requested long life, but you have requested for yourself wisdom and knowledge that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Now, that's amazing because God added this. That you, you could have asked, because as I said, Solomon grew up already in opulence. But watch this. Something I didn't even think about when I, since I read this. Long life. Right? The, uh, the, 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 even though he grew up in wealth, he could not, what about all his enemies? You know, the people around him, the, the nations around him. He said, you didn't ask for that. But he said, verse 12, wisdom and knowledge are given to you. And I would all, also give you riches and wealth and glory, unlike what is given to the kings who were before you or who, or who would be after you. So Solomon went to Jerusalem from the high place that was in Gibeon in front of the tent of the meeting, and he reigned over Israel. So this was such a great thing. We're, obviously, we're going to see some of the wisdom of knowledge. This, this story, uh, Chronicles doesn't get into his first test of wisdom. Remember when he had the, uh, uh, the two prostitutes that um, both had given birth at the same time and as um and as they fell asleep um one mother rolled over and suffocated her baby and then she got up and switched the babies and in the morning when the other mother got up she go wait a minute this is not my son and they started arguing about it so finally they, they came to solomon and solomon uh said well this one said this is her child this one said this is her child said, i'll tell you what bring me a sword i'm gonna hack the baby in two and divide it up and then the mother, the true mother said, no, 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 let her have it. At least the baby will live. Um, and people just marveled at that act of wisdom right there. Um, and of course, we're going to even see that with the building of the temple. Now, you remember I said that Solomon did not have a lot of faith in, in um, I'm sorry, David did not have a lot of uh, faith in Solomon. 
Remember, he said that Solomon was inexperienced and young and inexperienced. And that was, and that was kind of being nice. He probably thought, you know, he, he's kind of a mama's boy. But we're going to see that David's uh, opinion was unfounded because now he has more wisdom than even David himself. And so um, he says that you're going to have more wisdom than all of the kings before and after you. All right, verse. Um, um, now I'll say this. Um, Solomon's wisdom. Wisdom is something that is given by God, and we're going to see that when we get to his writings, the Song of Solomon, uh, the Proverbs. Wisdom is given, um, and 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 just. Uh, as a foreshadowing too, uh, you have to seek wisdom. And, and so Solomon here gives us the example of this. He will later write of this in the book of Proverbs that you have to seek after wisdom. He sought wisdom. He asked God for wisdom. And then God made him the wisest person ever to live. It is better to have wisdom. In other words, if you could say, okay, what would you want? Would you want a whole bunch of wealth. So like, for example, like now we're, we're living in a day where we have these humongous jackpots from time to time. At some point now people are are winning close to a billion dollars. So would you rather have that and say, okay, man, a billion dollars or wisdom? What, what, what would you rather have? Money or wisdom? See, wisdom is better because wisdom will keep that money. Wisdom will always give you the, the skill and the knowledge, see, to maneuver in life. So it's always better for wisdom. As, as, as Solomon would say, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. So you could, you could know how to, you could say, all right, I need to go to California. Let's say you live in New York City. You can say, I need to go to California. Wisdom is going to tell you the best way to get there. See, wisdom is going to say, all right, I need to get from New York to Chicago. Now, of course, wisdom has to, is going to give you knowledge and skill. What is the fastest way to get there? What is the most, uh, the, the safest way? The cheapest way? Or the most, you know, if you have money, which is the more, the better way? See, I could walk to California. I can ride a bike. I can ride a motorcycle. I can take the Greyhound bus station. I can take a plane. Wisdom, say, wisdom, to have that wisdom to say, I have that sound wisdom to make better choices in life. Wisdom, who you marry, what job you take, how you work the job, okay? All of that. All right, verse 14. This Solomon accumulated 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen which he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stone, and he made cedar as abundant the sycamore and the, and the Judean foothill. Solomon horses came from the king from, came from Egypt and Q. The king uh, the king's traders would get them from Q at the going price. A chariot could be imported from Egypt from 15 pounds of silver and a horse for about four pounds. In the same way, they exported them. They exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram through their agents. Okay. If you understand the economy of the times, you, you understand what he just said. I don't. Um. If you want to get a greater detail of this, go back to the when when Solomon, as the kings reported it, because he goes into a lot greater detail right here. One other thing too about wisdom, and we're going to see this later, but wisdom, you don't talk about wisdom. In other words, you you never say how wise you are. Your wisdom will be shown in your life and in your deeds, in your works. And we'll see that 
uh, we will see that um, in just a few chapters. All right, guys. Um, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you, have, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. Till next time, I will see you in the next study. All right.